Hey, if you clicked on this video, in the first link in the description, we have amazing beginner to intermediate online masterclass on music production with 100% money back guarantee. And you're gonna love it. Now let's get to the video. So Compressor, we call a volume manipulating tool. One of the holy trinity mixing tools together with equalizer and reverb. Simply, you need it to sound professional. To make vocal lyrics more audible, instruments balanced and recordings sound natural. Electronic music developed over the years in such way that nowadays lower dynamic range, so the smaller difference between highest and lowest peak of the audio, is perceived as fuller, tighter and natural. So people started to like loud music. Compression will also allow you to place the instruments way more accurate in the mix. Something that needs to be more in the background and not stick out too much, you will compress. Although that's a funny part, something that you want to stick out more you will also use compression on, but with slightly different settings. We'll come into it in a second. So compressor lowers the dynamic range, which is the ratio between highest and lowest peak of the audio. And the lower the dynamic range, the louder your sound can be without clipping or simply blowing up your speakers. Compressor will attenuate, so will take down the volume when the signal exceeds a specific threshold that you set. Important detail is that it can take the volume completely, allowing no signal louder than the threshold or just gently lowering the volume when signals exceeds it. In addition, you will be able to set how fast it reacts after the signal exceeded the threshold and how long it keeps it after the signal came back below the threshold. No need to worry, you usually won't be needing every single feature of it. Remember, compressor shapes and controls the dynamics and balanced and controlled dynamics are as much important in good sounding mix as balanced volume levels. Dynamics are pretty much volume, right? So how to use compressor? You will see various of different compressors made by third party manufacturers selling them for different prices, but there are hundreds of top chart producers using stock compressors. In FL Studio, you will have this plugin called Fruity Limiter. We'll get to it in a second, but here on the bottom we will have compressor and that opens up our compressor features. You will see as we talked, here we have our threshold and here we have our ratio, two most important knobs of the compressor. Every compressor you will see on the market will have at least those two knobs. So as we said with threshold, at the point when the signal exceeds the threshold, the compressor will be ready to work. With the ratio, we'll make it work. As you can see, nothing happens. And if we increase the ratio, we start to see some kind of processing already. So on the top left, you will see the compression ratio. Ratio two to one will make every two dB of the signal that exceeds turn down to one dB. So we pretty much cut the volume in half when the signal gets above the threshold. So if we set our threshold to minus 12 dB, you might think we should cut the volume in half, so minus 6 dB. Although it doesn't work like that, you can see that we are cutting it only 4 dB. So it would work if the sample would be perfectly normalized. But if we increase the ratio to 4.1, now every 4 dB that exceeds the threshold, gets turned down to 1 dB. So if we increase it to 20 to 1, every 20 dB that exceeds the threshold will be turned down to 1. So we're starting to get very, very harsh results. And now compression is about feeling and not necessarily audible difference. So with compressor, we usually want to make stuff pretty subtle. So to make subtle compression, we would take small ratio, of, let's say two to one, and take the threshold lower. Look what happens. We take a bigger bite of the peak here. Let's set the threshold even lower. You can see that threshold is very low. And if we set it to very harsh ratio, like 20, we would not preserve the natural look of the sample. We're cutting it like that, and then it goes down. And if we set the small ratio and lower threshold, we kind of preserve the shape. That will make it a little bit more natural. Now, Ni will define how quickly we want the compressor to go from state of not compressing to compressing. If we set it to very harsh amount, you will see that we take a bigger bite of the volume. 
very hard knee and soft knee. That's why if you want your compression to be even more harsh, you will take the knee a little bit higher. Although most of the time I never really touch the knee. Next up, you will have very important envelope settings. Here you will define the attack. So as I said earlier, it will define how fast we want it to react. So if we increase it to let's say 100 milliseconds, we kind of delay the effect. That's with higher attack and that's with lower attack. You can see that we are starting to leave the first transient. And now the idea is here, if you increase the attack, you need to lower the threshold to get more audible results. Let's extra grade it a little bit. And now again, very short attack. You can see that with long attacks, such as 100 milliseconds, we get this very first transient through. And now, if we would like to make our clap have more transients, then we would do something like that. Or make it more gentle. And without it. Now you can see that we get more of the first click. And now you can see that maybe we would like the compressor to work a little bit longer. So it takes the volume still here on the tail of the sample. That's what we have the release for. If we increase it, you can see that it's starting to work way longer. That's very harsh settings. We usually don't go that much. So you have something like this. You don't want to get very short release, like five milliseconds or three, because you can get some artifacts like that. So for now, keep at least 30 milliseconds to not get any issues. Most of the time when you'll be compressing, you won't be touching any release or sustain. Next very important aspect of compression is that we actually got rid of quite a lot of volume here. It's about minus five dB. And average of the whole sample, we would take, let's say like three or two and a half. So that's why we would need to compensate for what we've actually lost. Because some of you might say, we could take down the volume of the sample and it would be the same. And compression is about shaping the dynamic. So now we would need to turn the gain knob here. And in this VST fruity limiter, this gain will be your output gain. So the set you set here, they look like that. Let's say we want to increase the attack. Now, if we decrease the gain or increase it, the compressor will work exactly the same. So it's output gain. And that's actually perfect since we want just to compensate for the volume loss so we can make best A and B comparison. So we took down the volume by 5 dB and now increased it by like four. Now, if we listen after, Now we know what the knobs do, we will use compressor in action. What do you use compression on? So you will use compression on everything that needs to be more audible, fuller, punchier, or needs to fit better in the mix, whether it's more in front or more in the background. You will also use it on sounds and records that have weird, unnatural clicks, pops, etc. A few elements that will need compression almost always are vocals, real life recordings, sub bass, why and how you will learn in our full mixing course, and of course, depending on what style of music you make, in ADM, a dance piano will definitely need a compressor. In trap, it would be a melody to keep it under the vocal and make it natural. So the limiter works exactly as compressor, but with infinite ratio. So even more than that, you can see that if we turn down the ceiling, train these rappers like will get rid of every single peak that exceeds the threshold. And that's just like one knob solution for your compressing needs. You will develop your sound and definitely there are people that use only limiters and there are definitely people that only use slight compression. So on the vocals, for example, as we have here, we want, as we said, with compression to make them more audible. Treating these rappers like Reese's in pieces. I've been a problem since I was a fetus, earning my stripes like a work. So you can see that vocal will have a lot of this kind of peaks and dumps and the thing is that those lyrics here need to be as much as audible as those we made a full vocal mixing video on youtube as well so we would just aim with the threshold about the area that the quieter lyrics appear and increase the ratio 
I personally like to compress with the medium ratio, which will be about four or six. Eight to one compression is perceived as pretty harsh compression already, and 20 people say that it's practically limiting. So let's say we want to go with medium compression about four to one. Treating these rappers like Reese's and pieces. I've been a problem since I was a fetus. Earning my stripes like I work for Adidas. A leader in my league, better follow the leader. So we can see that compressor only takes the peaks from the vocal that sound unnaturally too loud. And that's exactly about that. We are compressing, making this vocal more natural and balanced. We could do it a little bit lower even to make the dynamic range even lower. Treating these rappers like Reese's and pieces. I've been a problem since I was a fetus. Earning my stripes like I work for Adidas. A leader in my league, better follow the leader. And now this is before and this is after. Let's listen to what we've changed. Treating these rappers like Reese's and pieces. I've been a problem since I was a fetus. Treating these rappers like Reese's and pieces. I've been a problem since I was a fetus. It definitely won't be clearly audible, but the vocal weird peaks like this, this, this are finally under control. And to make your melody more natural and balanced, you would also use compressor, maybe even in infinite ratio, which would be limiting in that case. <laughs> See, this is, in our case, definitely incorrect. We want our melody to be precise and controlled. And that's definitely not how the precise and controlled melody volume looks like. That's why we would target the lowest peak and limit everything. Aim for the peak. See how balanced it is right now? We would now need to definitely increase the gain knob to compensate for what we lost here. But beware in FL Studio when you're using the gain knob here with the limiter, it actually increases the in knob. So definitely not as in compressor. I'm not sure why it works like that. You can see that limiter doesn't work here. And here is over the top. And if we would use very high ratio compression, it would work like that. So beware about the limiter in gain here. In compression, it's very, very important that you are listening to the other instruments, how they relate to each other. Since it will be very hard to say if this piano is under compressed by listening only to itself like that. Sounds pretty all right, but if you listen to whole track. Tell me what you do for love, cause what you do it's completely killing everything else. That's why we need to listen to everything to decide for the best compression settings. So in this piano, we want to make it balanced and natural and also full sounding. Since we have a lot of this ambient sound after the piano plays. We just want to get rid of the very first jump in the volume to make it sit more in the background in the mix and make it controlled and natural, we'll use compression. This time it will be very soft compression. So we set the threshold a little bit lower and gently increase the ratio to about three, let's say. A little bit more natural definitely and in the mix. Tell me what you do for love, cause what you're doing is not enough. Tell me what you do for sits way, way better. And that could not be done if we didn't listen to other instruments. On drums, for example, you would use it in such way to make them full sounding tight and powerful. You can see that every time the clap hits, it's a little bit louder and using compression, we could get also the very low ambience from the drums up using the gain compensation. So if we take the threshold like that and increase the ratio, we only take down the kick and maybe we would like to go a little bit more gently, like minus 22 and even less than two to one compression, like 1.6 to one. And now as we lost around minus eight dB, we can increase the gain around this amount.
Now it might be a little bit too much, but as you said already, low dynamic range allows it to get louder. And look at this. If we turn off the limiter, we are at about minus three dB full scale. And if we turn it on, It's way louder and we have even lower peak level. FL Studio also has its own fruity compressor, which is exactly the same. You have the exact same features here, threshold, ratio, output gain, attack and release. So we could make the same settings here. The thing is that you won't just see what the result is. And I think it's pretty friendly to see what's happening, but also make sure to close your eyes from time to time when you're compressing to actually hear what's happening and not just get guided by how the waveform looks. So I can can't highlight enough how important compression is. And if you realize, your question should be, when should I use the compressor? And before that, you must know how to hear compression. That's two quite difficult questions. Compression is definitely harder to hear than reverb, and therefore you'll have to take some time to distinguish if the sound has high or low dynamic range. It might take months to master if you're starting out. It's very, very easy to see the compression on the waveform, as you saw already, but you want to mainly hear it in order to learn from listening when we should use compressor. After you'll be able to easily tell the difference, the next step to knowing when to use compression is as with every musical learning process, listening to a lot of music, music that you like, music that you want to produce. Only after listening to hundreds of tracks and focusing on drum groups, vocals, 808s, pianos separately, only then you will be able to tell if the drum loop you made needs to be more compressed or maybe the opposite. But there is a hack. I will always repeat, compression is the easiest way to distinguish a professional mix from a mature one. So make sure you're referencing and learning from high quality productions. So finally, most important question about compression that everybody asks and will ask till the end of the world, when should I use compression? A life hack that you can use to get it quickly is ask yourself, does this element need to be more full? Does it need to be tighter? Does it need more transient? Does it sound natural enough? Or maybe even does this instrument or vocal sound confident and powerful? In vocals, you want to make sure that the tails and as we did the quiet lyrics are not very much quieter than the louder parts to make the vocal sound confident and powerful. Second hack is that most of the time compression will need an element that needs to be tamed to not pop out through the mix. So to make it sit more in the background as we did with the piano. That's why it's important to note that as with setting correct volume balance, you need to have two sounds to know when one is louder than the other. Same with dynamics, compression, depending on what is the purpose of compression. Usually in this case, it will be much easier to set the correct dynamics and compressor settings when you're listening to the whole instrument grab or at least like two instruments that compete with each other. Third idea is if you're starting out with compression and simply don't know if, for example, your piano should be compressed, I understand that, try compressing it in a subtle amount and A, B, test which one you like better. Usually start with two or four to one ratio and lower the threshold to gently tame out the peaks. I will tell you that realistically, I use compression on the majority of the instruments, even very subtly, as it allows me to shape the dynamic of the sound as I want it to sound in the mix with all other elements, as we did with the piano and vocal. Remember, I said it a couple of times already in my first videos about mixing, not everything can be equally audible and in front of your face. That would be a total mess. You don't want to keep more than two or three elements popping through the whole mix. And that's the moment when compression is necessary. You will also hear about parallel compression, which is a really fun concept that needs video on its own. But basically, parallel compression or New York compression is over compressing your sound a lot. So very high ratio, very low threshold and blend it with the dry unprocessed signal using the mix knob here. That allows for different, also very interesting result. I can make a video about just that one day. If you'd like to learn music production from total zero to intermediate, skipping years of learning curve, check our full beginner course where in over five hours packed with knowledge, just like this video, you'll get to know every single thing you need to make hit songs, including navigation, sound design, arrangement, mixing and mastering, and of course, vocal production. If you're intermediate already and want to learn mixing in depth, check our full mixing and mastering bundle, which we released quite recently. Every course with 100% money back guarantee and every purchase keeps the channel running. Thank you very much for your support. And if you'd like to see more videos like that, leave a comment. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed this one and subscribe to not miss out on the next one. See you in the next video.